Welcome. Hello. Thank you for joining me today for my live video around trailblazing leadership, celebrating female CEOs. I really wanted to come live to you and talk to you about female CEOs who are redefining success. I'm Leslie Gadat, self-care strategist for female entrepreneurs who lead teams. I help them infuse self-care into their businesses so that they and their team members can avoid burnout, sustain motivation, thrive together both personally and professionally, and the the health and wellness of the business is at the top, the peak performance. Today, I want to talk to you about women in business who are making a huge impact in the world. This is a little bit different about how I've been going live, but today I wanted to showcase and honor women who are truly trailblazers in a different in different areas of business and stepping into many firsts, meaning female firsts, in corporations that have for many years been male dominated. So I'm going to go down through a list of uh, women that I want to showcase for you, and hopefully you will learn something today. So let's talk about Roz Brewer. She is the um, she, she is the uh, first. She, or she's the she's the Walgreens Boots Alliance CEO. Um, she her leadership is marked by commitment to improving health and happiness globally leveraging her extensive experience in strategic development, marketing, digital transformation, and, and more from her tenure at Starbucks Corporation. Her leadership includes partnerships with colleges of pharmacy to enhance the profession, to, which is demonstrating her commitment to healthcare innovation and community well-being. Uh, she's an American businesswoman and former, as I said, She's the former CEO of Walgreens before she stepped down in September, this past September. She's the first woman to become CEO of Walgreens Boots Alliance, group president and COO of Starbucks and, that, and CEO of Sam's Club. In 2021, uh, they appointed her uh, as CEO, making her the only black woman at the helm of an, uh, Standard & Poor's 500 company, um, and which is amazing. She also became the only, the in 2019, she also became the only Black woman to sit on Amazon's board. As Starbucks CEO from 2017 to 2021, she implemented, implemented policy changes and racial bias training for employees in more than 8,000 stores. And before Starbucks, she was the CEO of Sam's Club, which she helped bring into the modern day with services like advanced online ordering of groceries, which we know that is amazing. We don't have to get out into the the bustling crowds and going through and you know going through the the traffic trying to get to our favorite stores to go and especially if it gets really super busy on a weekend it's easier again to have those online services available and i think that's really cool what she's done um, i love the fact that she had an emphasis on diversity and inclusion uh, because she focused work on working with suppliers that value diversity. And that demonstrated the importance of diverse perspectives in driving innovation and understanding the market more. Um, her leadership's also been about ensuring that diversity is not just a policy, but it's a core component of the business strategy, creating more inclusivity and creative and more creative work environment. And what I love too is that um, she, be, with her response to racial bias, a, a racial bias incident, incident at Starbucks, showcased her commitment to action and accountability. And so under her leadership, Starbucks took the uh, significant step of closing its U.S. stores for, for all of its U.S. stores for racial bias training um, and reflecting that her belief is not just apologizing for mistakes, but really acting decisively to address them and prevent future occurrences. And again, this highlights the role to leadership, right? And settling, setting the tone for team culture and responsibility. I love how she's been able to do this. Now let's talk about Mary Barra. Mary Barra is, a C, is CEO at General Motors, and she's focused, she's focused on innovation, sustainability, and, and safety in the autom automotive industry. GM has committed to an electric, under her guidance, they have, they have committed to an all-electric future and has been at the forefront of autonomous vehicle development. She's been instrumental in fostering a diverse and inclusive workplace at GM, supporting various initiatives aimed at gender equality and minority empowerment. 
She's also the first woman to lead one of the big three automated automakers in the U.S., which is incredible. She's invested billions in electric vehicles, self-driving cars. I'm still on the fence about self-driving cars. I don't know. Unless we're all doing it, I'm kind of like on the fence about it. But the fact that we're going in a direction that is seeing future future focus is, is really uh, in, interesting and, and uh, inspiring. And I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, but I, what I love is that she's been able to do um, things like that, you know, bringing in, uh, you know, looking at ways to like really bring one of the big three car makers into the 21st century. And we're like looking at the future. What could that look like? Um, what I also love is that she um, she says that she that through her and especially through her leadership now gm is aiming to produce a million electric vehicles by the end of 2025 so by the end of next year so that's not too far off and that this is uh this was something that they said back in 2023 so just last year they have predicted that they would like to have a million electric vehicles by the end of next year uh, she is the chair of the Business Roundtable, which is a collection of America's most powerful corporate CEOs, and she sits on the board of directors for Walt Disney Company. Now, my third uh, woman that I'd like to talk about, her name is Jane Fraser. Fraser, she's she is um, she is the first female CEO of a major Wall Street bank, and that is Citigroup. Her leadership focuses on ethical banking, digital transformation, and global financial inclusivity. She has initiated a strategic reorganization of Citigroup, prioritizing consumer banking and wealth management with a keen focus on leveraging digital platforms to enhance customer service. She is, the, as, the, as I said, the CEO of Citi, and they're the world's most global bank, uh, serving clients in nearly 160 countries and jurisdictions. And since becoming CEO back in March of 2021, she's launched a multi-year strategy to transform, simplify, and modernize the bank for the digital age. Again, as, a, as their first female CEO uh, in, in history, she's also the again, also, again, the first ever woman to run a major Wall Street bank. That should give other women out there um, inspiration and actually, um, you know, motivation to like know that they're in these male driven, uh, dominated uh, companies that women's voices are being heard and are being where we may not have um, all the seats that we would love to have, but at least this is a start and this is a great start. Now, number four is Julie Sweet. Uh, she is the uh, CEO of Accenture. Um, she's emphasized digital transformation, cybersecurity, and cloud services. Uh, her leadership has been pivotal in guiding global companies through digital transitions. Again, she's the chair and chief CEO or chief executive officer, I should say, of Accenture. And she became CEO in September of 2019, assumed the additional position of chair in September 2021. Uh, she's committed uh, to business practices that promote sustainability and ethical operations, setting ambitious goals for gender equality and environmental stewardship. So I think these are incredible women so far. I have, I've told you about like four, and I've got five more to share with you. So, or I should say I've given you, yeah, four. So now I'm going into number five, Lisa Sue. So she is um, the, uh, she is under, she's working as CEO of the Advanced Micro Devices, or as it's known as AMD. Uh, and with her leadership, they have seen a remarkable turnaround with significant changes in semiconductor technology. Her focus on high performance computing and graphics technologies has positioned AMD as a major competitor in the industry. And she's been credited with revitalizing them through strategic investments in research and development, leading to groundbreaking products in the CPU and GPU market. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to give you as much information about these women, but definitely go and check them out because it's really incredible to see the stories of women who are actually in these leadership roles who are doing groundbreaking things. Again, some of them as first women, um, again, as I said, first women CEOs, first women CEOs of big three automakers or of world global banks. So I want to talk to you about Carol B. Tomei. So she is 
Um, she works at UPS. She, she's a CEO at, at UPS. She has been focusing on leveraging technology to enhance logistics and delivery services. We all use, we all know that a lot of us, we rely on GPS being on time with our deliveries. So I love the fact that she's also emphasizing the importance of e-commerce and global supply chain solutions. And under her leadership, UPS has invested in alternative fuel vehicles, which is great, and sustainable practices. They're aiming to reduce the company's carbon footprint and promote green logistics. As she put it, she broke lots of glass when she was appointed to run shipping giant UPS in June 2020. She is both its first outsider CEO and its first female chief executive. And she came out of retirement to take this gig on. So she had retired from a long tenure at Home Depot, where she'd been the CFO in 20, 2019. And in her first 100 days as CEO of UPS, she focused on preparing the logistics for the 2020 holiday season and the eventual delivery of the COVID vaccine. So what's really cool too is that back in October this past year, UPS expanded its emergency child care program after pandemic era federal funding for child care expired. So this is something that's really great under her leadership. Now, number seven is Corey Berry. Berry has led Best Buy through significant digital transformation, enhancing online retail capabilities and focusing on consumer electronics innovation. She's been an advocate for employee well-being and exceptional customer service, implementing policies that support work-life balance and customer satisfaction. Again, for me, this is huge because the bigger the company, you can get lost, especially if you are one of many who work for an organization. And uh, the fact that there are women out there who are leading the way to make sure that wellness within the in the company, meaning quality of life, is important, is like it, it just really makes me feel good because this is what I do. I help companies, uh, women who have small businesses, help them with their team so that they can bring that wellness initiative into their companies, having promoting that wellness for their businesses you know, so that they see that quality of life, not only outside as a personal endeavor to, again, that self-care uh, as a personal endeavor outside of the office for quality of life with your family and your friends and your community and all that, but bringing that into the business, because again, you spend so much time alongside your work colleagues that, you know, having that quality of life, you know, taking care of each other, having, you know, that being at the forefront, well, wellness initiatives at the forefront really can say such a, you know, can say such a, a, a great thing for a company, but also it helps with, you know, that, that Im the morale of everyone, that retention, people working together, wanting to like work on and build the vision of the company with the, the founder. Now, number eight, we all know this woman, her name is Oprah Winfrey. She, her leadership and management style offers valuable lessons in team collaboration and innovation. She is known for her transformational leadership style, focusing on inspiration, emotional intelligence, resilience, focus, and confidence. At OWN, which is Oprah Winfrey Network, her leadership approach includes, um, you know, being a mission-driven leader, uh, uh, providing a clear North Star for her team. This approach ensures that her team decisions align with the overarching goals of the organization. So I think this is important because, again, you have a business as an owner, but having your team be a part of the vision, helping you to like bring that to life, working together, but, you, but you're the North Star leading the way, making sure that they all, always have a place to look to for guidance, for leadership, uh, but also also that too that you are helping them to uh, to be able to like share their vision and be able to use it together to build it. I think is is a fantastic model. Uh, emotional intelligence. She utilizes emotional intelligence in her interactions. And she says that helps maintain long term relationships. It boosts team morale and collaboration. Again, knowing how each other is wired emotionally is so important. Like emotional intelligence intelligence, like your interpersonal skills and your intrapersonal skills, like knowing your own emotions and how to manage those on a daily basis, but being able to do the same with other people within, you know, especially if you're working together um, and you've been working together a long time or, and you don't understand each other, but learning and under 
taking that time to fully understand each other and to learn about each other, I think is really a great way to like build that team collaboration overall, like working together so that you can work towards the vision of the, of the business as a whole. She also does uh, one of the things that I like too is that her focus um, and, and strategic vision guides the network towards achieving the vision. And so she emphasizes the importance of making informed and strategic decisions. So there's strategy behind it, right? It's not just like throwing spaghetti at the wall, but there's like strategy behind the, the decisions that are made. And I think that's important, you know, especially. Um, you know, in business, like when you are using, especially, I think really important, your time, like a lot of people think that freedom comes from money. And yes, money is important. It's energy. It's what fuels a lot of the things that we do in life. But to get that time freedom, you know, it doesn't come from how much money you make. It comes from how you manage your time. And this, this is true in anything that you do. So if you know how you're, what's going on your calendar, you're not overwhelming it, you're doing what's in alignment. And again, being strategic in what goes on your calendar, the things, the goals that you're going after, like the pieces of the puzzle that you're working on now, um, are within alignment with where you're at right now, you will use your time more effectively. You will find that you will have more time freedom. Um, she also has that inspirational approach. She leads by example and focuses on personal and professional improvement. She inspires her team to strive for excellence. Again, this is so important, you know, teaching your team to also be leaders as well. They may not lead a team, but teaching them to lead themselves, to lead by example, uh, helps the business growth, helps the business health, helps the team's health and collaboration, people wanting to work together. Um, and people management and communication skills. She acknowledges the importance of building and managing effective teams. She emphasizes strategic uh, thinking, clear communication to inspire and align her team with her vision. You know, I've, I've spoken with a team, uh, two CEOs, uh, founders of a business, and, you know, at times where they will change their mind, um, their change of a, a goal or not necessarily a goal, but maybe the the framework of how they're they're going after something and they'll change it on the fly. And it's how learning how to teach their team members to be adaptable to change. And that comes through communicating, right? Being able to clearly communicate the vision, but also clearly co create um, clearly communicate to your team that change can happen, you know, uh, and that you know, it's if they can be adaptable to change and be open to communicate how they're feeling and be open to communicate like what their their needs are to meet this new direction. Um, again, this leads to better overall communication, better uh, collaboration, you know, just as a whole, the team working well together. My last person that I want to talk to you about is Amal Clooney. Um, what I love about her is uh, she is she specializes in international law and human rights. So she represents clients before international courts, including the International Criminal Court, the International Court of Justice, and the Europe European Court of Human Rights. As the co-founder of the Clooney Foundation for Justice, she is dedicated to promoting justice by ensuring that those responsible for human rights violations worldwide are held accountable. I think that's really important because, um, you know, not, I, I, not that I'm saying that we have better laws or because I don't know. I can't speak to other countries. I don't I don't live in other countries. But I what I can say is when it comes to the law, when you can focus on something and you stand for what's right, I think that's really important. And when you have, especially when it comes to human rights, um, you know, again, this is important to, to that we understand that it's our responsibility as humans not to just turn a blind eye. So I love the fact that this is where she has focused her her time on. Her foundation, the, the Clooney Foundation, focuses on war crimes, genocide, freedom of the press, promoting the rule of law, and most recently women's rights, which is important. So her her successful career as a human rights lawyer underscores the importance of expertise and deep knowledge in driving team efforts towards common goals. So again, there's that communication, really making sure, you know, she has that, she work, her work involves extensive collaboration with legal teams, 
NGOs, international bodies, highlighting the role of effective communication and advocacy in fostering teamwork and achieving objectives. So again, really have it coming together, you know, making sure that you have all of the knowledge that you need, you know, the experts are in the room, they, they're experts at what they know, and that bringing that knowledge together collectively, you've heard of the masterminds, right? You know, when you have like minds that are on in, in, they're on the same path for the same goal, you know, even if they're in different experts in different fields, bringing them together, they all, um, as that mastermind, um, they all benefit from it. So, and again, through that communication, being on the same wavelength, if you will, it fosters that teamwork and achieve and, and helping you achieve your objectives. And her focus on human rights and international law exemplifies ethical leadership, right? Inspiring teams to work towards meaningful and impactful goals. Again, um, human rights, human, right? Our rights are important, but making sure that we're, we're holding each other accountable to the things that we do in the world that we shouldn't just be able to just do things because we hold the power or that uh, we just feel that it's our inherent right to just do what we want. You know, life um, is important. And I think that we're all, in, we are all uh, entitled to live a beautiful uh, life where we're, I believe that we are worthy and deserving to, <clears throat> to live a life of joy and to pursue our dreams and our goals without fear that someone is going to come and trample upon us. And I think it's so, this is really important. I really love the fact that she specializes in this type of law and that she's out there, you know, with her team, making sure she's bringing people together that can work together to do this. So again, why am I talking about these nine women from various backgrounds and how does it tie in into collaboration success stories? Um, in discussing these remarkable journeys of these nine women, from Roz Brewer to Amal Clooney, it's evident that their leadership transcends mere po positional authority. Each has carved a niche in fostering team collaboration, driving productivity, and championing innovation within their respective domains. What unites them is not just their groundbreaking status as leaders in traditionally male-dominated fields, but their shared commitment to leveraging their platforms for greater good. And I think that's really important. Again, I feel that we are better together when we support each other. As women, you know, we can we can we can really reach our goals and do better with life if we take care of us and we actually do it together. These leaders have demonstrated that effective leadership is not solely about achieving business success. It really is about making an impact that resonates beyond the boardroom. By prioritizing inclusivity, sustain sustainability, and social responsibility, they've reshaped their organization's cultures and, by extension, influenced global business practices. Their success stories underscore the power of diversity in thought and, and leadership style in solving complex problems and driving meaningful, meaningful change Ultimately, the legacy of these women is a testament to the transformative power of visionary leadership that's grounded in empathy, resilience, and a deep-seated belief in the potential of collective effort to create a better world. Like, I, I truly believe this. We are better together when we are working together to uplift, inspire, encourage, you know, just to, to help each other to be better, to do better so that we can have better. Their achievements serve as both an inspiration and a blueprint for future generations of leaders aiming to combine success with significance. So I hope these stories of these nine women who are forging paths and driving monumental change across various industry has not only enlightened you, but also inspired you to you know, keep building your extraordinary life. These trailblazers in exemplify what it means to lead with purpose, with integrity, and a deep commitment to fostering environments where collaboration and innovative innovation thrive. Their narratives are a powerful reminder of the impact one can make by challenging the status quo and leading with conviction. I hope their journeys motivate you to envision and work towards a world where inclusive leadership and collaborative success stories are not the exception, but they become the norm. So again, thanks for tuning in. I hope you have a great week. Until next time, like I said, I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.